The weasel was having a terrible day. Not only was he feeling quite ill with conjunctivitis, coryza, a cough, and a fever, as well as a full body rash. But when he ran down the stairs, he tripped over a pan. And worst of all, his girlfriend was now leaving him for having refused multiple times to get the measles vaccine. And the insensitive cop was just laughing and licking him. Please, please, don't leave me. I am sorry, you have refused the measles vaccine way too many times. I am gone. <laughs> She's leaving you. Would you please stop licking me? Alright, this is our scene on measles, represented by the weasels in the scene over here. Weasels is going to remind us of measles. And as we saw in the house, measles is also known as rubiola. Not root beer saying hola, root beers don't speak Spanish, and for that matter they don't speak at all. Rather, rubiola. Measles is also known as rubiola. Now before we talk about this scene, which reminds us of different features of measles, we notice this random part of the scene over here, where we see this mixer coming out of the parachute. So this parachute mixer over here shows up in our scenes of Paramyxaviridae, as measles is of the Paramyxaviridae family. The rhino reminds us that these include RNA viruses, and the rhino is balancing this negative sign, which reminds us that Paramyxaviridae are negative scents. We see the envelope of the virus, as these viruses have an envelope, around a helical capsid that is non-segmented as opposed to influenza virus, which is segmented. But let's focus on the main part of the scene over here. So again, we had these weasels over here, and the girl was leaving the guy because he refused to get his measles vaccine. I guess he is anti-measles vaccine. This theme is consistent with measles infectivity, that this highly contagious infection presents especially in people who refuse a vaccine, or in their children. The live attenuated vaccine, which is very safe, is part of MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. And this vaccine is very effective at preventing the disease. And you don't want to get the disease, because it can be pretty debilitating, and there's no specific treatment for it. But anyway, let's talk about the disease. This weasel woke up, and he had symptoms of cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis. Luckily for us, he also woke up with three C's on his face, which reminds us of the cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis. And we see his red eyes over here, which reminds us of the conjunctivitis. And he also woke up with a fever, which is why he was using the thermometer. Now, after these initial symptoms, a maculopapular rash develops, which extends from the face towards the trunk and extremities, which is why this weasel over here has this arrow on his trunk, which reminds us that the rash extends from the face towards the rest of the body. But it spares the palms and the soles of the feet. Now, before we talk about what this weasel is tripping over on the floor over here, we recall the cop in the scene. This cop over here was only making things worse, because as the weasel was suffering in his sadness, the cop began licking him. Cop licking, or cop lick, reminds us of cop lick spots. Cop lick spots on the buccal mucosa are a pathognomonic finding. These cop lick spots consist of small white or blue grayish spots on an erythematous base. So a patient who comes in with these cop lick spots should be considered for measles infection. And the cop has this picture of the gnome over here on his shirt, just to remind us of the pneumonia. Gnome for pneumonia. That's primary measles pneumonia is a complication of measles. And this brain over here in the pan reminds us of the neurologic complications. The brain on fire reminds us of the encephalitis. But the fact that it's in this pan reminds us of the subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis, which may present years after the initial infection. Alright, I hope you enjoy this scene on measles. Take care.